Hello and welcome to the Zia Wool Studio Buzz podcast. My name is Doug and I'm coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico. This is a podcast about knitting and about all the yarny things. And as you probably have found out by now, I'm also the dyer behind Zia Wool's yarns. Today... First of all, I let me say I hope you've had a very nice Thanksgiving. It was a nice um, family gathering for us, small as always. Funny side note, we used to always travel on Thanksgiving. We would just travel, do go to some fun places, not do anything. I mean, just our family, my husband and our two kids and I. And then now that the kids are big, I've said that now we have to stay at home for Thanksgiving because the kids are not living with us anymore. So now we're going to have a more traditional Thanksgiving where everybody comes here. So today this was, I mean, yesterday it was our son and his uh, partner and uh, our daughter. So we had a very nice evening and uh, good food and my daughter made banana bread and I do not make a turkey. I will, even though, I don't know, <laughs> everybody makes a turkey. I don't. I make a traditional, more festive German dish, which we all enjoy and everybody's excited about because that's what my mother used to make on holidays. And so we keep that tradition alive. Yes, where to start? What do I want to tell you about first? I There's really not a lot of um, projects that I have been working on. I have been dyeing a lot of yarns, as you can imagine, because on December 3rd, is a stu I'm going to host a studio tour open house right here in the house with two other artists and there is a in our neighborhood various artists open their doors for visitors and uh, you're going to be able to buy something or just hang out and see where people work and have a cookie or whatever people have I usually have some hot cider and um and cookies of course <laughs> and so it's always an event that i thoroughly enjoy i love meeting the people and um don't feel like you cannot come if you don't want to shop just stop on by and visit for a little while i'm excited about that and um, if you would like me to send you the flyer with more information uh, pop me an email to ziawools at comcast.net i'm happy to pass um, that along to you i yeah like i said i'm gonna have a lot of yarns i'm also gonna have uh, project bags and what am i forgetting yarns oh duh Zia, <laughs> the Duke City Mints. I've been boring you with those. No, I feel like they're not boring because they're so different with the made from um, hand spun yarns that they don't lose ever their magic. And so that's what I wanted to show you first. But um, let me start with the sweater that I'm wearing so I don't forget. Um, it's a sweater that I have designed a little while ago and I've made it from Zia Wool's Dreamcatcher. My, uh, it's a fingering base that I have dyed. I um, designed also the lace pattern and if that is something that you are drawn to a few months after i made this isabel kramer published a pattern i apologize i don't know the name of that from the top of my head but it also has a lace going down the sleeve and it's really pretty so that is something that um, would be if you like this maybe you go and uh, check out her pattern um, 
which of course I'm totally unrelated I think I finished mine months before and mine has a very different neckline than hers yes and now I also want to tell you um, I am supposed to greet you from my friend Doris and um, I told you she made it home okay and by now she has finished the shawl for her mother the Schnecke and she gifted it to her mother for her birthday and uh, mom loved it apparently and Doris allowed me to show you a picture of the beautiful shawl in this uh, yummy uh, be strong berry pink color and it's a drops um, it's a drops yarn al an alpaca I think it's a Suri alpaca silk blend also but it's heavier than my Suri alpaca blend so I have um, brought you the next Duke City Mints, like I said. And what I have finished, and I never bring you the leftover yarn because it doesn't tell you anything anyways, because I use hand spun yarns, so the amounts are, you probably cannot relate to the amounts. The Duke City Mints, if you have not seen me talk about them before, they are my a pattern on Ravelry, published as a free pattern in English and in German. And I love to make these with hand spun yarn because they're just so fun because the colors change all the time. These two pairs were, of course, of the same yarn and the braid was from a German hand dyer who specialized in fibers and the name was Elfenwolle but to my knowledge she does not dye anymore sadly I mean I really loved how these turned out so pretty very fall and then another skein that I had been looking forward to um, using was this one and as you can see these are a little larger but still I have big hands so they fit me well and yeah it just sometimes the the size gets determined a little bit by the yarn also <laughs> of course it gets determined by the yarn yes next pair pairs I should say that was one skein that also gave me enough yarn for two pairs and I kind of try to match them a little bit but they will always be different that's the beauty of it in my opinion however <laughs> the next skein that I've used hand spun again challenged me i had used into the world fibers and i think the it's a mix of little bits that are come in a bag i got them in a d stash from a local spinner but the colors are not necessarily matching and but I never mind because I I've said that before that when you spin a yarn kind of everything fits together in your two ply and it's like a garden I mean nobody I would never arrange my garden by color where I say oh this color doesn't fit with that one I mean all the colors the blend of colors in the garden is just always so beautiful however this yarn challenged me when I started knitting it up it had a lot of different colors and this is what I have left I'll show you what I made in a second and the first mitt was this one you're gonna say what are you talking about these are pretty it's lovely and it's very very soft love the fibers not sure what it was but then I made this one 
And if you did not know that my husband knows nothing about colors, you're going to figure it out now. Because I said these colors, these two mitts don't work together. And he told me why. They're fine. <laughs> it's a matter of value. These are very light. May not even, I don't know. I hope you can see that. It's a very light, almost pastelish blend of colors. Whereas this is like, bam, strong. And I wouldn't mind that in one skein, but as one light mitt and one dark mitt, I really didn't like it. So I looked at my skein of yarn and I thought, oh yeah, this is definitely a lot stronger and darker colors again. And so I made another, so I made a third mitt. No, I have three mitts and I don't think this is going to give me another one. I haven't weighed it yet, but also it's again going to be a strong colored mitt if it was enough. So I'm probably not going to do it. And I still have this little bitty bit and I still need to add my two thumbs. Yeah. This was my, the my latest Duke City Dilemma, Duke City Mids Dilemma. I am still working on finishing um, a few more mitts, and it's kind of cool because they are, I've arranged them by numbers, so I don't pick whatever I want, but I pick the next skein of yarn and, um, don't even know what's next, but I'm going to finish this one first and I'm going to take a picture and before I wind my next one. And this was a week of um, <laughs> crazy problems because I meant to make, um, I, I really needed my Swift, my yarn Swift and the thing broke. I have had um, the connectors break on me and that's no big deal at all. They you just replace them with a sturdy piece of um, thread. I mean, not thread, strong, kind of a thin rope kind of stuff. But this was a piece of wood that broke, so I knew I could not uh, fix that. Uh, um, maybe my friend can who's a woodworker but I could not didn't want to bother him on short notice and so I ordered a new one and it came today so now I can I couldn't even um, wind it from the swift which would have been a, uh, I, I don't know I mean it's doable but no fun not so much fun <laughs> so that's going to be next finishing these knitting the thumbs and then um, getting on to the next pair and hopefully I will be able to knit another Whew, how many more are missing I think I have four more in my circle of skeins I think maybe I will make a short video before all the mids go out into the world so you can see everything that I have knitted up. Yeah. Because the fingerless mitts will be sold at the studio tour. So my other project, you will guess, and maybe you were thinking, oh, she's probably going to wear it. No, I don't. I am working on this sweater. which was the pattern was published in the German magazine Stricktrends in 2016 and I wanted to use hand spun yarn for the body and then I thought I need hand spun yarn for the crochet sleeves so <laughs> I kind of was a little bit late with my spinning and I you know, in, sometimes you have these visions where everything needs to be perfect and you want a certain yarn. And in this case, I had my mind set on a drapey yarn. So 
which means a yarn with a silk or a tencel or a bamboo content. And I ended up even dyeing fibers from my own, um, from the Zia Wool stash that I ha still had that was undyed. And it was a 50-50 merino silk blend. And I have since managed to dye the color for the flowers. It does not look much, but I'm telling you, this took me a long time to spin because I know how crochet kind of gets, yeah, it just gets a little more hefty than a knitted fabric. So I think I'm going to be fine with this. even though it's quite light, a light weight. And I'm probably fingering, I want to say. I did not weigh or measure anything, I, and I probably won't. But now I have my Swift and I can wind it. I want to make sure it's 100% dry because when did I apply this? I think I only applied it yesterday. So, but my problem is, first of all, I don't like to spin in the it um in the evenings too too much because of the light issue. I like to have good lighting to spin, but I had to spin at night because during the days I was uh dyeing the yarns and working and for on the prep for the studio tour open house. So I ended up spinning this in the evening. And like I said, it only was done yesterday. Hello, do we have just about one more week to until the studio tour? <laughs> I have to pick up my pay, pace here. And I am not sure that I'm going to get it done. But if I don't, then that's it. That's fine too, you know. It's all supposed to be fun. If not, it's going to be a Christmas sweater. But here is my green that I have dyed for the accents in between the edging on the top and on the bottom. And I think it's a beautiful green and it's very nicely complementing this. And now you're going to wonder what happened to the body of the sweater. No worries, at least I have that part done and blocked already because I was a little bit uncertain with the size because I had to change my stitch count. So that is it. Love how it turned out with the colors. I used two different skeins and in case you wonder, I ply, I always do two ply yarns. This, don't know the fiber content. This was, gosh, no, I didn't bring it. I think with a bamboo, merino bamboo. Yeah. And I put it on and it fits. So that's already good. However, I find and... I can't tell you anything about it, but I find, I mean, about the pattern because it's from a magazine that you would have to buy. But I'm telling you, there's barely any instructions. They're so short and it's very intimidating and a little bit scary. And I think that's why I had stalled a little bit in my work on this sweater, even though I really, un I really want it, but I'm also intimidated by the pattern. So we shall see, and I will definitely tackle it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's going to be fine. It's all supposed to be fun, right? Yes. So told you about the Dukes, told you about my sweater. And now that's it. I have some shop news that I wanted to tell you about something super fun that's going to be coming to the shop online on my website ziawools.com and I 
it is that I will have mini, se mini skein sets. I have already popped a few Sundancer mini sets into the shop, but what I have now, what I'm planning now is that pr probably, I have to say, it's probably going to be for the last time. Uh, I will have be all the be like beekeepers in one mini skein set. I thought I was going to be able to show you a set today, but like I said, my skein, my a Swift, uh, my umbrella Swift broke, so I couldn't do that. But I can show you all of the beekeeper colorways as full skeins because they are in the shop right now. And I made a nice little video of the lineup. I just love them all. And right now, it's it's kind of funny because often when I haven't been dying in a while, I start dying at some beekeepers because they're like a gathering with old friends in a way. And but this time I thought, oh, I started dying them, and then I thought, oh. I've done these so many times but then I felt like no there so at first I thought I'm gonna retire the beekeepers after this and then I thought no I can't they're just so beautiful I like them myself so very much then more oh yes this is the beekeeper's Christmas if you want a special colorway for some Christmas knitting. Another one, what is this? I should recognize them. I would, but this is the beekeeper in the garden. Beekeeper. at night and one more beekeepers Christmas which I showed you already and then I can't remember if you have seen these guys already no I don't think you have because it's been a while this is a lucky skein. I had two of this and it's so funny because sometimes you, as a dyer, it's such a great experience when you dye up something that at first seems to not turn out well and then you add one more step and all of a sudden you have a color away, which is amazing. But I mean, in this case, not repeatable. <laughs> And there's also this, which is a Sun Dancer. This is a Sandia, which is my preferred merino sock yarn. And, my goodness, everything is falling. Then I have these two, which would be great for some socks with a pattern. And like I said, all of these guys are in the shop now. And look out for the beekeeper mini skein sets, but I'm thinking it's going to be probably another two weeks before I can get to that because it's always, I'm, I hand wind, I don't have a motorized um, ball winder. And before I can turn them into minis, I have to wind them into a ball and then I make the mini skeins from that and that is hand wound. That's why the minis are always quite the work. But that's okay. I, I love making them because they always look so pretty in their lineup. Oh, where do I have the mini? Yeah, aren't they pretty? That's in the shop right now, but I think I showed you those last time. 
and I wanted to show you some other yarns. I don't know how much you actually really want to say yarns that are not available for purchase, but I wanted to share something that I was so excited about. I had some customers, some friends in Europe who asked me about certain colorways, which inspired me to create something new, which is repeatable. And I wanted to show you those because I love how they turned out. And one of them is this, and this is called the Purple Bear. And then I also have the Berry Bear. I really like both of these colorways a lot and I think they will be permanently added to the shop. And then there is this one. Oh my gosh. It's, I think this has to be the colorway of this year, the 2022 favorite. It's called Desert Vibes. And this one is on Dreamcatcher to ply merino yarn. And then I have another one. This one, still missing the label, but I am extremely happy with how this turned out. And one of my Instagram friends, uh, Sue, she recently posted something where she was spinning some fibers in some colors that reminded me of one of my favorite boulders up here in the desert when I go for my run. And it's a lot of grays, of course, but it also has some lichen on there. And so this is called Boulder Crush 2. I used to have another Boulder Crush, a very old colorway, but I think I like this one better. But I still wanted to, that's why I wanted to name it still. I liked the name. So it's still a Boulder Crush, but Boulder Crush too. And we, we have come to the end of the podcast. And I know this is a short one. I hope you still had a good time. And I hope you still enjoyed hanging out with me. As a final note, I thought I'd share another recipe with you. I know I've shared a bunch of German recipes, however, this one is one that an American friend shared with me after I loved the cookies so very much. And this is how it looks like in my book. Oh, that's so funny here. Everything falls out. Award-winning peaches and cream pie never made this <laughs> looks good all right and grab a piece of paper <coughs> and grab a pen i will read this to you okay pause the video and get your supplies fountain pens preferred of course or you do a screenshot if you can read my writing Everything I do is in grams, so you need a scale. I'm sorry, I can't do cups. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't work. Um, one cup of butter softened, 180 grams of sugar, 100 grams of brown sugar, 250 grams of chunky peanut butter and that was something that I looked up online it was in the recipe is it said one cup so I asked Siri what it is what that is uh, two eggs two teaspoons vanilla extract two cups of all-purpose flour which would be 270 grams one cup of old-fashioned oats, translates into 85 grams, two teaspoons of baking soda, 
half a teaspoon of salt where I always use a little bit less because peanut butter has salt so that's fine and then two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips I which translates into 300 grams I did the recipe the last time what I did was and I wrote that down here I added pecans and walnuts and I used that is not enough well that's funny 120 grams of milk chocolate chips and 100 grams of semi-sweet chocolate chips but that doesn't add up to 300 I don't know why maybe because I added the nuts I don't know and now Da, da 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 normal thing cream butter and sugar add peanut butter egg and vanilla eggs and vanilla combine flour oats baking soda and salt stir into the cream mixture stir in chocolate chips and add it on the nuts and then drop by rounded tablespoonfuls onto ungreased baking sheets bake at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes i did a little bit longer i did 14 minutes but i think like 13 minutes would be fine well you all the ovens are different so see what works for you or until it's golden brown they're supposed to be golden brown cool one minute before removing to wire racks to cool and that's it they're so good these are like they're done and then a few days and they're vanished especially if my son comes he loves cookies and especially something like this he loves peanut butter he's like he's like i hope they're not with coconut because i will probably think he's a little bit allergic to anything coconutty and that's really now the end. I, like I said, I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're recovering from a lovely Thanksgiving. And I say recovering because everybody tends to eat a little bit too much, but whatever. You gotta do what you gotta do. It's all fun. I mean, living a good life and enjoying good food um, is part of, part of the deal and um, most of all i hope you got to spend the day in good company with um, people that you love and yes i hope you're having some fun knitting on your needles and until i see you next time happy knitting Bye.